Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Uh, joining me today is Robbins Schrader, the CEO and co-founder at Safe Ride Health. Robbins, how are you today? Good, thanks. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Excited to, to kick off the conversation. Um, we usually like to just dive right into it. So if you could tell the audience a little bit about your background, then we can talk a little bit about Safe Ride Health. Sure. Um, so... I chair basically a personal and professional side of that. Uh, on the personal side, uh, I started Safe Ride because unfortunately I lost a friend to addiction. And so I and several members of the leadership team have all seen how hard it is to navigate chronic care. And one of the root causes is just foundationally accessing care. Uh, professionally, <clears throat> I'm ex-Navy, spent some time on the aviation side, spent five years in construction, uh, building projects all over the world. So infrastructure in Poland, schools in New York, um, Went to business school, uh, then spent some time in management consulting, really focusing on turning around family-run businesses and also um, industrials, de de developing growth strategies for them. Uh, and now I find myself in healthcare, and I love to be here. Uh, great, thank you for that background. Uh, and so now you find you, you started Safe Ride Health. Um, let's assume this isn't the case, but let's assume no one's heard of Safe Ride Health. Uh, give us the 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 basic intro about the company and then kind of dive more into the details um, for, uh, for even people that have heard about you and want to, want to learn more. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so I liken Safe Ride to effectively the, the Amazon of healthcare. Um, but instead of moving packages, we move, move people. And uh, that's particularly important for the nation's underserved and folks are also aging into plans. So think Medicare Advantage, Manage Medicaid. And um, you know, this is one of those examples where all sides are aligned. What we do is create the technology, the network, and the services to help members seamlessly access care. And for us, that's typically the 5% of a plan's enrollment that drives 70% of their total cost. So think dialysis, wound care, chemotherapy, oncology, and then behavioral health. And so for us, we're totally aligned with our clients who bear full risk on these lives of helping these members access care and live happier and healthier lives. Um, and that's what we do. And we've been doing it all across the country and look forward to doing it more. Now for, for our audience and, and for myself too, I'm, I'm curious, uh, why, why is it so important to simplify non-emergency medical transportation? Sure. Um, so this is an old line industry, uh, that in a fee for service landscape was used to taking thousands of calls and funneling it into a call center and having this you know, very monolithic, non-member centric experience. And the outcome of that was the nation's underserved just didn't show up to dialysis, wound care, and chemotherapy. As the market flipped from fee-for-service to managed care, now our clients bear full risk and are totally motivated to have those members comply with our course of care. And now what we're doing is, is deploying this technology suite that really envelopes the member. So the health plan, the provider, the the person who's driving the member to care, whether it be a Lyft driver, Uber driver, medically qualified transportation, or a gas card, and then finally the member themselves. Um, and in doing so, we've created this transparency and this agency that is really helping folks reconnect with care and living happier and healthier lives. Now, let, let's you mentioned uh, Uber, Lyft. Um, so I remember back a couple of years ago, I started seeing Uber and Lyft at healthcare conferences. I think the first, one of the first ones was Hims. Very confused because this was also, I think, before they were even putting out announcements of what they were doing in it. They like they were doing their whole pitch at the conference. Uh, can you can you tell me like what what does that relationship look like? How does that play into what you've um, you, you've built? Yep. So we have a mantra at Safe Ride of basically providing the right ride to the right member at the right time. And so when we think about that. We use a lot of data to understand the member's acuity where they are in their care journey, and also what their familiarity is with different modes of transport, whether it be, hey, I live 50 feet from a bus stop to, you know, I know Lyft and Uber, or this is the first time I've ever experienced rideshare to, I just broke my leg and I really need to go in a wheelchair van to my next appointment. And so we think about deploying all modes at our disposal to solve the singular problem of helping a member access care. And both are terrific partners and part of a broader solution um, in the market. I, I liked I like the relationship there. I like that it's not, you know, one and not the other. Um, 
you know, you're, you're solving, you're solving a core problem and you're also along with building what you needed to, you're also working with and partnering with the organizations that help you uh, solve that problem. So that's super interesting. Um, in terms, you were mentioning uh, about, you know, how, um, why non-emergency medical transportation is important. Let's talk a little bit, and you mentioned it a second, uh, a second ago, but let's dive more into it. How does, how does that improve patient outcomes, simplifying that process? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple statistics that I always find shocking. The first is that, you know, upwards of 4 million appointments are missed a year. And unfortunately, these are the appointments that really matter. So again, dialysis, wound care, chemotherapy, behavioral health. Um, the nightmare scenario for our clients is, is a member calls up their provider and says, hey, you know what, um, I'm going to go Monday and Wednesday, but on a Friday, my son picked up a shift at Walmart. So it's okay. I'll just make it through the weekend. And that's when the alarm bells go off uh, because we know that by Sunday night, that member may be in the hospital with fluid buildup. Um, awful for the member, awful for the plan, and just a bad experience all around. And so what we are doing, again, is, is taking all the friction out of the system to both deploy these really lightweight interventions that play into the broader theme of SDOH to help these folks live happier and healthier lives. And in terms of, uh, I think I'm going to see you at one of the conferences uh, coming mm-hmm. up. Um, I think it was HLTH. Uh, which which will be cool. Um, l- let's talk a little bit about what's next for Safe Ride. Yeah, so we're really excited. One of the things we've we've done is is we've disrupted the legacy call center model, and now created the technology to empower our clients to engage members directly. So in that journey, a member calls up care coordinator and says, "Hey, I'm not going to make it." Old world was hang up and call this broker and. You'll go through an IVR and 45 minutes later, maybe you get a ride and then maybe that ride shows up. Now it's click a button, all the same data points pass through our system and a ride is booked in 30 seconds or less. And so we see this as a really novel innovation that's going to help the entire care continuum engage their membership more closely. So we're really excited about that. The other thing is, is data. You know, we run millions of rides a year now and every ride helps us learn more about the member, the provider the zip code and the market we serve. And so our algorithms are just getting smarter and smarter and smarter. And so we're really excited to see what comes next. I like it. You're going to have to do something really creative for uh, April Fool's Day, by the way. Like say (laughs) that, like you integrated like, uh, uh, what's, what's those, um, uh, like, uh, chariots, chariots into your, uh, into your process where if, if you want, you can also link up with a chariot to get where you want to go. Something like mess with, you know, get, get people like, what the heck are they doing there? Uh, no, I'm just messing. Um, you can tell I've had too much coffee today. Can't you Robbins? Um, but, uh, but Hey, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, sharing information about yourself, sharing information about safe ride, uh, excited to link up with you in person at these events coming up. And uh, hopefully we can have you on again real soon. We love that. Thanks again for the time. Great to meet you.